Welcome to our first lecture on this course. So our first lecture will talk about the introduction to principles of veterinary medicine. This presentation will generally talk about the objectives and principles of farm animal practice. Specifically, we are going to, to deal with the objectives and principles of food producing animal practice. To start, the slides to follow will provide information about the objectives, principles, and the major services that the different farm animal practice provide to their public and to their clients. So let's start with the food producing animal veterinary practice. So this provides service to the owners of meat, milk, and fiber producing animals such as dairy and beef cattle, pigs, sheep, and goats. Also included are the routine elective services, such as castration, deworming, dehorning, testing for brucellosis and tuberculosis, as well as the dispensing of veterinary drugs. So we, have, we also have the industrialized animal agriculture. So how do we define industrial agriculture? This is a basically a large scale intensive production of animals. One of the problems that is seen in this type of production is the harmful use of antibiotics so that even when the animals are healthy, uh, they, they are still you know, being exposed or administered with antibiotics. So among the issues that are confronted with the industrial agriculture is the issues on animal health as well as the production problems. So the veterinarian in this field must be skillful and knowledgeable in epidemiology. So when we say epidemiology, that is a branch of uh, public health that will deal with the incidence, distribution, or impossible control of diseases and other factors relating to health. So the veterinarian under this, uh, that works under this field must be knowledgeable enough in this branch of science. He must also be knowledgeable on applied nutrition. So applied nutrition is a field that emphasizes you know, the role of the diet or the feed of the animal in promoting health and also as a way of therapy. The veterinarian must also be knowledgeable on animal housing, education and training of the animal attendants as well as the analysis of the production indices. One of the most common fields you know, in veterinary medicine is the companion animal practice. So how do we define you know, a companion animal? So according to the, the American Society you know, for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals believes that companion animals you know, should be domesticated or domestic bred whose uh, physical, emotional, behavioral, and social needs now can be readily met as companions in the home or in close daily relationship with humans. So this uh, practice includes extensive use of clinical pathology for evaluation of the hematology, clinical chemistry, immune status, and other functions of the, and other bodily functions of the animal. We also have the use of ultrasonography, endoscopy, as well as the nuclear imaging. So we also have the equine practice. So in recent years, among the advancements that are noted in this field include advancements in equine reproduction, intensive clinical care of newborn foal, and treatment of medical and surgical diseases of vulnerable, athletic, and competitive horses. So if we are going to compare uh, two veterinary practices, we have the in-companion animal practice and the in-food producing animal practice, we can say that they have contrasting objectives. So in the case of in-companion uh, in animal practice, the objective is to restore the clinically ill patient to a normal state. And uh, it uses all the available you know, diagnostic and therapeutic techniques that the client can afford. Meanwhile, in the case of the food producing animal practice, the objective is to improve the efficiency of animal production using the most economical methods 
of diagnosis, treatment, and control of diseases. So we have here uh, to emphasize the word most economical method because again, you know, the, the food producing animals you know, have a fixed economic value as compared to that of the um, companion animals. The next section will talk about the objectives of the food producing animal practice. So the first objective of food producing animal practice is efficiency of livestock production. And this is considered to be you know, the most important objective in food producing animal practice. So it is said that the animal production is a value added system. This means that the value of the animal changes according to its life stage. How do we say that the animal production is efficient? So we can only say that the animal production is efficient if the output that we get from our animals will be, will be worth more than our total input cost. So meaning that the products that we get from our animals, uh, the products, uh, for example, that, that will refer to the meat, no, the, the meat as well as the milk, will be more than or will be worth no more than the the expenses that we have invested in our animals. So the livestock production efficiency you no know, is to a large extent you no know, dependent on two factors. The first factor is the health status of the animal as well as the reproductive performance of the animal. So we can only achieve efficiency in livestock production if we are successful in these two fields, so in the management of health status of the animal as well as in the management you know, of the reproductive performance of the animal. In considering these factors, of course, we have also to consider you know, that the, the, the vitality or the health of the animal as well as reproductive performance will, of course, uh, be affected by different factors such as the biological type of the animal, we also have the environment, you not know, the physical environment, can also affect the health status you know, and the reproductive performance of the animal as well as its nutrition. So to be able to achieve efficiency of livestock production, we need to provide the most economical method of diagnosis and treatment of animals. Again, most economical method because our livestock has a fixed economic value. We also need to monitor the animal health as well as its production performance. Uh, we also need to have specific disease control and prevention programs. So our veterinarians and the veterinarians as well as the veterinary technicians and the animal attendants should, should be well aware of our um, disease control and prevention programs. We also need to organize a planned herd health programs and uh, we also need to have an advice on the proper nutrition, proper breeding, as well as proper management practices in the farm. So the next objective of food producing animal practice is animal welfare. So according to the American Veterinary Medical Association, animal welfare means how an animal is coping with the conditions in which it lives. So an animal is in good state of welfare if it is healthy. Of course, that should be uh, supported by scientific evidence. It is comfortable. It is well nourished, safe, able to express innate behavior. And if it is not suffering from unpleasant states such as pain, fear, and distress. Good animal welfare requires disease prevention and veterinary treatment, appropriate shelter, management, nutrition, humane handling, and humane slaughter. Therefore, the food producing veterinarian needs to encourage livestock producers to maintain standards of animal welfare that comply with the views of the community. The third objective of the food producing animal practice is zoonosis and food safety. How do we define zoonosis? Zoonosis are infections acquired from animals. So these infections occur normally in vertebrate animals. So these are the vertebrate animals and can be passed on to humans who come in contact with the animal. So the 
veterinarians must promote management practices that ensure that the meat and milk are free of biological and chemical agents that are capable of causing disease in humans. So the next section will be about the principles of food producing animal practice. So again, when we say principle, that refers to the fundamental truth or proposition that serves as the foundation for a system. And the synonyms of that are idea or concept. So we can say that uh, the following slides will be about some uh, concepts about the food producing animal practice. So the food producing animal practice needs to have a regular farm visit from the veterinarian. So the veterinarian uh, makes a, an emergency or planned visits to the farm depending on the, uh, of course, the routine no, and depending also on the case and the uh, situation. In developed countries, they also provide large animal clinics in order to cater you know, the hospital needs or the health needs of the animals. So one of the problems that are being encountered with the, the by large you know, animal clinics you know, in developed countries is that uh, they are being hampered by the high operating cost you know, of providing hospital care to the animals and also you know, the limited economic returns that are possible for the treatment of the food producing animals. So again, the limited economic returns is due to the fact that the livestock animals now have a limited or rather a fixed economic value. So another concept of uh, food producing animal practice is clinical examination and diagnosis. So the diagnosis, treatment, and control of diseases of food-producing animals are heavily dependent on the results of the clinical examination. Therefore, the veterinarian now must become highly skilled in all aspects of clinical examination. So one of the aspects of the clinical examination is history taking. The veterinarian must be able to obtain a meaningful history based on the presented signs and based on, for example, now based on interviewing the caretaker of that particular uh, flock or herd of animals. This is very important because the laboratory equipment, the laboratory data may not always be available to support the diagnosis of the, of the case. The, the veterinarian must also become an astute diagnostician. This means that the practitioner must always have the ability to accurately assess the situation and he also must have uh, physical diagnostic skills and the ability to have uh, a skill on visual observation, uh, auscultation, palpation, percussion, and others, and other physical diagnostic skills. So on the form, the clinical findings, including the events of the recent disease history of the animal, are often much more powerful diagnostically than laboratory data. In the diagnosis, it is important not to correlate the clinical findings with the pathology of the cases. The veterinarian must also be a competent field pathologist. He must do necropsy in the field and make tentative etiological diagnosis. So when we say a tentative diagnosis in the medical field, that is also known as a provisional diagnosis, meaning that the doctor is not 100% sure of a diagnosis because more information is needed. So another concept of the food producing animal practice is examination of the herd. So among the challenges that a veterinarian faces in examining or in doing a clinical examination of the herd is, uh, for example, you know, when the veterinarian is, of course, presented you know, by animals that are affected with one or a number of clinical or subclinical diseases or in which the owner's complaint is that the performance is suboptimal but the animals appear normal. So these are just you know, some of the um, challenges faced by examination of the herd of animals. 
So the intensified animal agriculture or the large scale no, animal production may result in the increased frequency of herd epidemics. And uh, of course, this is also very challenging no, to the veterinarian if there is the presence of the herd epidemics. And of course, now this can be controlled by vaccination. The veterinarian may do repeated visits to the herd in order to develop effective treatment and control. So this is very important, especially for those um, cases or diseases no, that are that needs no a frequent uh, a repeated visit. No, so for example, uh, the respiratory diseases in the herd, uh, salmonellosis are some of the cases that, that needs a repeated visit no, by the veterinarian to be able no, to develop an effective treatment and control procedures. Again, no, because these uh, diseases or these cases are recurring in nature. Veterinary technicians are a very important part of the food producing animal practice. They are now employed by veterinary practices to assist in a wide variety of tasks. So veterinary technicians can collect and computerize animal health and production records from individual herds, collect laboratory samples, and assist in the preparation reports. So under the veterinary supervision, they can also do routine elective surgical procedures. So the veterinarian is thus provided with more time to pursue the diagnosis and correction of health and production problems in herd. So that is one of the main advantage of having veterinary technicians in place because the main role of the veterinarian, which is to do the clinical examination and the diagnosis of a particular health problem in the herd, health problem can be uh, more focused when there are presence of the veterinary technicians. We also have veterinary epi epidemiology, you no know, one of the also concept you know, of under the food producing animal practice. So uh, when we say veterinary epidemiology, you know, that is one of the many fields of veterinary public health and it focuses specifically on disease surveillance response and prevention. It involves data collection and analysis not to develop and test hypotheses related to disease patterns. So basically, uh, in veterinary epidemiology, we do uh, one of the aspects of veterinary epidemiology is disease surveillance. And um, when we say disease surveillance, now that is uh, an information-based activity that involves the collection, analysis, and interpretation of data originating from a variety of sources. So veterinary epidemiology and the tools under this are available to allow the veterinarian to identify and quantify the risk factors of the disease to provide a, a more accurate prognosis to accurately assess responses and to evaluate not the control procedures. We also have the collection and analysis of animal health data. So the producers must keep and use good records if the veterinarian is to make informed decisions about the animal production. So record keeping, you know, the, the records are very important in food producing animal practice. So the records must not only be kept but more importantly, it must be used efficiently in order you know, for the veterinarian to make informed decisions. How do we mean, uh, what do we mean by informed decision? So when we say uh, informed decision, that is a decision based on facts or information. So the veterinarian, you know, which, uh, which is responsible for determining you know, the diagnosis as well as assessing the health um, status of a particular herd will be much more in a better place to decide when records, good records are available 
in the farm. So veterinarians can develop a computer-based animal health and production profile of each herd for which they are providing services. So this is very important in order to properly assess the health condition, the health status of a particular herd of animals. Another is public health and safety. So it is the major responsibility of veterinarians to ensure meat and milk from animals are free from pathogens, chemicals, antimicrobials, and drugs that may be harmful to animals. So antimicrobials should be used in adherence to withdrawal times for meat and milk. Of course, now the veterinarian must be well informed about withdrawal period. Withdrawal period now is the time that must elapse between the last administration of a veterinary medicine and the slaughter or production of food from that animal to ensure that the food does not contain levels of the medicine that exceed the maximum residue limit. So the veterinarian must be well informed of this aspect because in the first place the the main consumer of the products now coming from the food producing animals will be the public or will be the uh, people so another very important aspect of um, food producing animal practice is of course the economics of veterinary practice so we have here a variable now that uh, we are usually looking into particularly by farmers, in uh, availing veterinary services is, of course, the financial returns that the farmers uh, have on their commodities. So the financial returns of the farmer that the farmer get you know, from their products or from their commodities, uh, especially, uh, for example, the low prices you know, incurred during, for example, when there is oversupply of meat and milk, may also, of course, greatly influence whether the farmers will avail professional services or do the job themselves. So another is uh, veterinary education. Now, for those uh, veterinarians that are uh, that plans to go into uh, being a food producing animal veterinarian or wanted or have a passion in this particular field, uh, the, these veterinarians need you know, to undertake a postgraduate clinical residency program. So this is true for uh, developed countries. Or uh, they, they need to develop expertise on their own you know, by self-education. So usually self-education you know, can be achieved, of course, when they are employed to a particular um, farm wherein they will be exposed to the practices to that particular field. No? So uh, they can do you no know, self-education self by their own in a specialized veterinary practice to enhance and develop their profession.